Hi, this is Michael Autos, and we're talking about herbal medications and dietary supplements, and this is recording part one. First, a brief introduction. When we talk about herbal medications and supplements, we're talking about plant-based substances that are used for medicinal or health purposes. They're usually available without a prescription, but legally they're not considered drugs like over-the-counter medications. This eliminates the need for proof of efficacy or safety. There may be plant-based substances or synthetic purified chemicals. People call them herbal medications or botanical medications. A lot of people think that these are natural, but there's no guarantee of safety because legally they're classified not as drugs, but as dietary supplements. Therefore, they're exempt from animal studies or clinical trials or any post-marketing surveillance. There isn't really good testing for drug interactions. In fact, the FDA would have to prove that they're unsafe in order to withdraw them from the market. They may have all sorts of inert, toxic, adulterated, misbranded, or contaminated products, and there could be quite a bit of variability in potency and processing methods. In 2007, the FDA applied a regulation with some quality standards, and this has improved things, but a lot of these safety concerns remain. Remember that just because they're natural, that doesn't mean they're safe. A natural substance contains hundreds of active and inactive ingredients. And remember that some of these drugs that we use every day, which can be very potent, are also plant-based, including atropine, caffeine, cocaine, digoxin, ephedrine, morphine, aspirin, scopolamine, and the chemotherapeutic taxol. Herbal medications can have a lot of different effects in the perioperative period. They can have direct pharmacologic effects. They can have pharmacodynamic interactions where they change how other drugs, drugs work at their effector sites. Or they can have pharmacokinetic interactions where they change the absorption, distribution, metabolism, and elimination of other drugs. We're going to go through each of these drugs briefly. Coenzyme Q10 is similar to vitamin K. It's an antioxidant, and people take it to reduce blood pressure, treat heart failure, Parkinson's, and cancer. Studies have shown that it can both decrease and increase warfarin activity. We recommend stopping this drug two weeks before surgery. Fish oil is used because it contains omega-3 fatty acid. Fish oil inhibits platelet aggregation, and therefore is used in the treatment of coronary disease, hypertension, cholesterol, and also for its anti-inflammatory properties. Patients taking fish oil are at increased risk for bleeding, and especially caution should be used in patients who are already taking other antiplatelet or anticoagulation meds. This drug should be stopped two weeks before surgery. Glucosamine and chondroitin are components of the proteoglycan in cartilage. People take it to treat osteoarthritis. There are some studies that suggest it may cause or worsen diabetes, and it may increase bleeding when taken together with warfarin. These are usually recommended to be stopped two weeks prior to surgery. Vitamin E inhibits platelet aggregation. It also antagonizes vitamin K-dependent clotting factors. People take it to prevent stroke, myocardial infarction, and to treat atherosclerosis. It's also taken for its antioxidant properties. Vitamin E increases patients' risk of bleeding, and caution should especially be used in patients who are already taking other antiplatelet or anticoagulant meds. Vitamin E should be stopped two weeks prior to surgery. Echinacea, also called purple clone flower, is thought to activate cell-mediated immunity and enhance immune function. People take it to treat upper respiratory infections, urinary tract infections. Side effects include rash, nausea, allergic reaction, and hepatotoxicity. Echinacea may decrease the effectiveness of immunosuppressants and steroids, although we do patients, see patients develop some immunosuppression with long-term use of this substance. Patients taking echinacea should avoid hepatotoxic drugs, and in general, we recommend avoiding this substance in immunocompromised patients. Recommendations are to stop this drug two weeks prior to surgery, although the data is not very rigorous. Ephedra is also called mawang. 
It is a direct and indirect sympathomimetic, commonly taken as a diet aid, stimulant, or bronchodilator. Because of its sympathomimetic effects, it can precipitate myocardial ischemia, stroke, and hypertension. There's increased risk for ventricular arrhythmias if patients are administered halothane. And it may interact with MAO inhibitors and deplete endogenous catecholamines. Patients should stop taking this at least 24 hours before surgery. We'll stop recording here and continue again in the next recording.